Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome to the vlog. It feels kind of weird vlogging. I haven't vlogged since my competition, which was a couple of weeks ago. It's good to be back in front of the camera. My last video was more of a sit down video, more than anything. So, uh, anyway, this is the beginning of my bulking series, which I am very, very excited about. And to be honest, like I'm obviously doing it for you and to show you what I'm gonna do to get bigger and get stronger. Um, but I'm also doing it for me, like it's gonna be a good way to hold me accountable because I'm not gonna lie, oftentimes on a bulk I do kinda bitch out, I am like a little bit afraid of gaining too much fat and when I see like my abs disappear or fade or something like that I always give myself like an excuse to go on a mini cut or end the bulk or whatever. So this is gonna be a good way to hold me accountable and like in a couple of months time if I'm on camera and I'm saying something like I might go like on a mini cut or something like that. I literally want someone to comment below and be like, stop being a little bitch. Continue your book. <laughs> but yeah, I am absolutely buzzing to get this series going. It's just gonna be a lot more fun. Like the last number of months on this channel has been all about cutting. And as a result, like my content was like really, really limited. But now it just everything is a lot more flexible. Like my full days of eating are, are gonna be so much better. Like just on the weekend there, I ate out for lunch. And I got a thigh takeaway, which for most people is just like, so what, uh, shut up. But for me, like, that was big. Like, I haven't done that in ages, so it was just unreal. But yeah, let's get this series going. And this morning, I took my morning weight and I also did a physique update. So let's cut to that now. So yeah, this morning I weighed 70.8 kg, but just to make my starting weight on this bulk a little more accurate, I am going to use my last three weigh-ins. So yeah, I've been logging my weight on the Fitbit app, and as you can see, this morning I weighed 70.8 kg, yesterday morning I weighed 70.9 kg, and last Friday I weighed 70.8 kg. So if you add all them up and divide by three, it actually works out at pretty much 70.8 kg. So 70.8 kg, is my starting weight on this bull. And then in terms of rate of weight gain, uh, I think I'm gonna try and gain approximately 0 0.5 to 1 kg per month, maybe closer to that 1 kg mark. Uh, and for some people, like that may seem slow, but the more advanced you are in terms of lifting years, the less muscle you have to gain. So if I was to have the approach or be in the mindset that I want to just gain as much mass as possible, uh, then I'd probably just turn into a fat mess and that would be completely counterproductive. Uh, so I think one kg per month, like around that, is definitely a good aim and it's still quite a substantial amount of weight like let's just say i gain one kg per month and i bulk for six months or something like that that is a six kg gain which is almost one stone like so i'm really interested to see how i transform over the next few months oh this bowl is so hot, fuck. But meal number one going in, 200 grams of egg whites. An absolutely pathetic meal. And you might be wondering why I'm having such like a poverty meal whilst I am on a book. Well, even though my calories are currently a lot higher than they were while I was on prep, and I will be going through my calories and macros in the next video, uh, but my appetite is actually sky high, like it does not match my current calories and macros and I feel like I could easily smash like maybe 4,000 calories per day easily. So that is just something that I am dealing with post-show, it's kind of like a side effect. 
uh, and a lot of competitors go through the same thing so I just need to be careful over the next few weeks and I'm not gonna lie like I've had to stop myself from going to town on the contents of my fridge over the last few weeks but you know I'm keeping it under control which is good uh, and something that I am doing is limiting my calories in the morning so having kind of smaller meals like this uh, so I can save most of my calories for later in the day and that is when the hunger is at its highest so you know it just makes sense but yeah let's give this a go and my mom has just walked in so she might be making an appearance in the background oh and I got this sauce from Super Value the other day it is callow fish and it is 1000 Island style dressing and it is unreal like so so good and one of the great things about being on a bulk is that I don't have to measure it because there's like barely any calories in it this is weird Thousand Island dressing on egg whites. It definitely is weird. I know you have this on burgers and stuff, sandwiches, but I don't care. I genuinely think prep has ruined me. Like, I would eat anything and think it was nice. Should I have Thousand Island dressing, ma'am? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Cheers, go. Is it weird to have it on egg whites? Uh, no, it's mainly, it could be used on anything, a salad. But like, if you use like a salad cream, some people would use it uh, over fish and prawns and things like that. Mm. Okay, it's like a, a very light, well, yeah. I used to buy it years ago. It's lovely. Yeah. I got, I picked one up in Super Value. Yeah, yeah, I see they do them in my uh, butcher, those, all those slim sauces. I stopped putting milk in my coffee on prep because I drink quite a lot of coffee and the milk was probably racking up a few cows and on prep, you're just a bit obsessive. Uh, but I haven't gone back to milk, so I'm officially a black coffee drinker now. And just like all black coffee drinkers, you need to remind people on a regular basis that you are a black coffee drinker. So every single video from now on, I will give you a gentle reminder that I drink black coffee. And I don't take milk. No milk. Black. But yeah, let's run through the workout aspect of my bulking plan. So I have written it all out on the whiteboard here. I think it looks alright. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, so let's start with my split. And this is a completely new split to me. And for, for the people that know me, uh, you know that I usually do a push-pull leg split. And I have done for many, many years. But now, moving forward, since I got the feedback from the judges that I was... Or since, basically... I saw myself on stage next to the other competitors and I saw that my arms were a big weak point and uh, they will be a big focus moving forward. So now I am going to have a chest and back day, I'm going to have a legs and ad day and I am going to have an arm day. So this is my new three day split. So in comparison to the push pull leg split there is slightly less focus on chest and back because they're kind of combined into one day. But there is a lot more focus on arms because they have their own day. But yeah, let's run through each day really quickly. So on my chest and back day, there's going to be three chest and three back exercises. And there's going to be a bit more of a focus on my upper chest for the first time in a while. Uh, then the next day is legs and abs. That's pretty standard. Nobody really cares about legs. Uh, and then the third day is arms. And there's going to be two side delt two bicep and two tricep exercises. And on this day, you know, there's a potential for it to be quite an easy day because it is just isolation exercises. However, I am going to bring the intensity on that day. And I'm gonna use a lot of kind of advanced training techniques on that day to get the most out of it. So things like drop sets, supersets, uh, rest pause sets, cluster sets, things like that. So I'm actually really excited to record that day for you guys. Still can't say you guys, I think it's cringe, you guys. And let's move over here and I will show you an example week. So, uh, Monday chest and back, Tuesday legs and arms, or legs and abs I should say, Wednesday arms, Thursday rest, Friday chest and back, Saturday legs and abs, Sunday arms, and the Monday after that would be a rest, then it would be Tuesday chest and back, etc, etc. So, I'll be taking a rest day every fourth day and the main reason for that is because it's important that there's a rest day between my arm day and my chest and back day because there's going to be a bit of crossover between these days because on my chest and back day I'm obviously going to be working my arms uh, so it's just important that they get a 
at least a full day to recover just so I can get the most out of all of my sessions. And usually I will be training six days per week, so I will be doing each session twice, but the odd week I might only get to the gym uh, five days per week, so I might be busy, I might be going away somewhere, uh, and in that case I will drop a leg day. So legs are obviously gonna be less of a focus for me than my upper body, and um, so it is important that I get my two chest and back days in and my two arm days in. And if leg day needs to suffer the odd week, then, you know, so be it. And then let's move back over here. And as you can see under duration, I am going to stick with this plan uh, for six to eight weeks or until I plateau. And what I mean by that is until uh, I am finding it like extremely difficult to make progress on my lifts on a weekly or a monthly basis or whatever. And that's why it is so important to track your lifts because if you are not tracking your lifts, then you're not really gonna know uh, if you're plateauing. So I actually wanna show you what I'm gonna do. I actually just put this on my Instagram story, preparing everyone for how round my face is gonna be. This is peak bulk last time. Look how round my face is. So round. I I literally never knew that my face was that round. And what was I doing with my hair? This wasn't even that long ago. When was this? April 19th, 2018. So like a year and a half ago. Round face, shit hair. But yeah, I've started to put together a little document on Google Sheets to help me track some of my lifts. Uh, and I've actually started to do out an example to show you how I will be doing it. So each time I do an exercise, I will be tracking the reps that I did and the weight I have lifted. And from that, I will be getting the volume. So volume is reps multiplied by weight. So for example, let's just say uh, on the first set, I did eight reps on 80 kg. That would be a total volume of 640 kg. Uh, the same for the second set. Let's just say in the third set, I increased that and I did nine reps. That would be a 720 kg. And then let's just say on the fourth set, I did nine reps of 82.5 kg. That would be 742.5 kg. So my total volume on the incline machine press in that session will be 2,742.5 kg. And then when my second session comes around, I will look back on my first session, look back on the total volume, uh, and pretty much try and beat it. And if I do that every single time, that is how you make progress. So volume is absolutely key, and increasing your volume over time is what needs to be done to grow muscle. See you later. It's a nice day today. Okay, chest and back session about to go in. It is just after four o'clock. I'm usually in the gym at this stage. Nearly, I'm usually finished at this stage, uh, but I just met up with one of the lads there and we went on a walk because it is a gorgeous day, but I have a little pre-gym snack ready to go. So this exotic smoothie mix that I got from Aldi, it's a mix of frozen pineapple, papaya, and mango pieces. The mango pieces are really, really good. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, a monster, which was on sale in Mr. Price, one euro and 25 cents. Bargain. So, have my carbs, have my caffeine. Let's do this. Not actually sure, like, what fruit is what. I think that's papaya. I don't know what papaya is. And whenever I put these up on my Instagram stories, people are always asking, like, if I eat them frozen. I'm like, yeah. They're, they actually taste so much better when they're frozen because they're kind of crunchy. When they're not frozen, they're just really soft. Yo, 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 what is going on everyone? Welcome to this chest and back session and in this voiceover, uh, I'm pretty much just going to walk you through the workout and talk about why I have set it up the way I have uh, and all that kind of stuff. So the first exercise that I'm doing here is the incline bench press and as I said, upper chest is going to be a big focus of mine over the next few months. Uh, so for the first time Ever, I think I am putting an incline press before a flat press just so I can get uh, the most out of it pretty much and this was actually my first official uh, chest and back session of the bulk so I was just kind of figuring out how strong I currently am engaging what rep range I want to work within moving forward uh, and I think for the most part I'm going to try and stick 
to the six to eight rep range and make progress there. Here, you can see I am attempting 90 kg, but I only get out five reps or something like that. And you can see at the end here, I am not happy about it. So this is the final rep, I think. Rack the bar, fuck's sake. Weak, so weak. Uh, oh, and here I'm entering my reps and weight on Google Sheets, on Google Sheets, I should say, on my phone, and it's actually extremely handy and something I will definitely be doing uh, moving forward. And then next up, I moved to my first back exercise, which was this lap pull down machine. Uh, and I actually forgot to mention that seeing as I am a member of two separate gyms, so Platinum Physique, which is the gym here, and Go Gym, which is the other gym that I train in, uh, my sessions and my exercises will slightly change based on where I'm at, which is nice, uh, because between the two gyms, I am literally spoiled for choice in terms of equipment. And then after uh, the lap pull down, I move back to chest, and I'm doing the flat machine press here. So I've hit my upper chest, and now it's time to focus on overall chest development and as you can see I'm using plates uh, below the handles to elevate the starting position and some people might wonder why I'm going with the machine instead of free free weights and it's pretty much just because I want to you know I'm still lifting heavy I'm still pushing myself extremely hard on each set and the machine may even allow you to push yourself even that bit further uh, because there is a bit less of a risk involved. So yeah, I'm just kind of doing what I am feeling there and then I move back to back and I am doing a wider grip seated cable row. And when it comes to your back workouts, you always want to include a vertical pulling exercise, so something like a lap pull down uh, or a pull up and a horizontal pulling exercise as well. So something like a seated cable row or a bent over barbell row uh, just for overall back development. And I am focusing on my lats here. So I'm trying to isolate them as much as possible by pulling the bar uh, down towards my stomach as opposed to towards my uh, kind of chest area and also by keeping my elbows tucked as much as possible and then I moved on to my final chest exercise which was the pec deck fly and this was my final set uh, which was a rest pause set so a rest pause set is pretty much when you complete uh, your set as normal rest for about 10 to 20 seconds like I'm doing here and then get out as many reps as possible which will typically only be a few so I think I get out one two three yeah i get out three here and you can actually repeat that process a couple of times but i only did it once there because i'm a little bitch and then finally i moved on to some half kneeling cable face pulls to hit uh, my upper back and my rear delts and again this is my final set which i made a drop set so seeing as my chest and back are going to be getting a little less volume over the next few months because my main focus is arms uh, i'm going to be adding in things Things like drop sets, rest pause sets, and just training really, really hard in general on these chest and back days and really focus uh, on making progress on my lifts because even though they are not the main focus over the next few months, you know, they're still a focus. I still want them to develop. I don't want them to fall behind. Uh, so I just need to keep that in mind and make these sessions really, really productive. So yeah, I'm going to wrap the voice over there. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Give it a thumbs up as well, and I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, I am back from the gym after a very successful chest and back session. It just feels good to have calories in me again. Like, like to put it bluntly, workouts whilst on prep are just shit. Like, they're just not ideal. Even the good ones are kind of shit. Uh, but I'm just fetching my post-workout meal from down the back of the garden. I was letting it defrost. Let me show you what it is. So I am going to have this Mega Mitsa which I got from Kerrigan's, which is the butchers I get all my meat from, and I am really excited about it. It's basically a massive burger, a uh, turkey burger, I should say, with toppings. The ingredients are actually here, so I went with the BK Flamer Turkey Mega Base. Uh, I got posada sauce, jalapenos, uh, what's this? Peppers, sweet corn, diced ham, low and low-fat cheddar cheese, and then the macros are over here. So in this thing, God, it's so annoying the way they're on the corner. There is 87.6 grams of protein. 87.6, yes. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what it is gonna be like. To be honest, I bet you it's gonna be unreal. Round head. What? Round head. Shut up, you. Yeah. Round body. Now, what? that's gone too far. Get away. No, that is gone 
Way too far. Ooh, this looks good. It's weird. I think I'm gonna stick it in the oven for a while, take it out, and then put some like spicy season on it. Oh, not really sure how I'm gonna do this without it like falling to bits. This. Nope. Not bad, not bad. That just looks ridiculously good. Wow. I also added some smoked paprika. Because I didn't know what else to add. <laughs> Alright, let's give this a go. I also have some veg as well because I am a healthy guy. And I'm going to add some sweet chilli sauce to the top of the veg. Ooh. All right, I'm going in. Mm. That is phenomenal. This actually surpasses my expectations and I had high expectations. That's how good it is. Mm. 522 cals, 80, what grams of protein? Three, seven, I think it was 87. Unreal. Okay, it is seven minutes past ten and I am just about to wind down for the evening. I have my big bowl of popcorn here. Some things never change. I have a Pepsi Max, which is so much better uh, than Diet Coke. And I'm probably just going to watch some YouTube uh, or something like that before going to bed. Rach has actually been working at some event in Dublin City and she's staying uh, overnight in a hotel for like four days or something like that, which is so shit because... We have so many programs to watch and I literally cannot watch them. So I can't watch Power, uh, can't watch Peaky Blinders either. So it is very inconvenient. But anyway, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It honestly takes two seconds and it really does help the channel a lot. And I know a lot of people say that, a lot of YouTubers say it, but it genuinely does. It helps your video get seen and things like that. So yeah. Please do it. And in the next video, I am going to go through my bulking calories and macros. And I'll probably combine it with a full day of eating as well. So the next video is going to be really, really good. Lots of treats. And I am absolutely buzzing for it. I'm just buzzing for this series in general. It's going to be unbelievable. Trust me. But yeah, thank you again. And I will chat to you next week.